welcome again to Choose Life. I am Lynn Edwards, and we are back again with another devotional. Today is February 10th, and we are still continuing in the book, Mornings with the Holy Spirit by Jennifer LeClaire. Pastor Gina was so gracious to invite me back. So I want to give you another devotional and um, see what the Lord has to say for this day. This is a new day. So we get excited about each and every day that we have life in our bodies. We get excited about the Lord each and every day. And we want to bring you into that excitement and that joy and that love for this day. So let's begin with our prayer and then we will um, get into the devotional. So let's pray. Father, we thank you today because you are a great and awesome God. We thank you today that you have given us life today. We thank you for breath in our bodies today. We thank you that this morning has produced a new mercy, Father. We thank you that it is because of your mercies, Lord, that we are not consumed. Morning by morning, we see new mercies, Father. We thank you, Lord, that you, your compassions are with us and they don't fail today, God. We thank you today for the joy of the Lord stirring us up as we get up and get our day. We thank you that the joy of the Lord is arising in us and causing for us to walk in the life and the freedom and the liberty that you have given us, Father, to live out this day in your presence, for your glory, in your name, Lord God, so that you are praised and glorified in this day. It is an honor and a privilege to be in your kingdom, to be in your graces, to be, Father God, with you. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are with us. We thank you for your connection with us today. We thank you that we are able to share our love with you, pour our love upon you, tell you how much we love you, how grateful we are for our salvation, how grateful grateful we are that you are with us. How grateful we are that we have life in Christ today. Lord, we love you. We love you. We love you. We love you, Lord. Father, we lift our voices to tell you how much we love you. And God, we give you glory today. We give you honor today. Lord Jesus, we give you praise today. We love you. We'll never stop can't live without you jesus we love you lord can't get enough all this is for you jesus we love you we'll never stop can't live without you jesus we love you lord can't get enough all this is for you jesus we love the lord today just begin to tell him how much you love him Begin to just express your love to him. Begin to pour your love out on him today. Even as you go about the course of your day, just tell him how much you love him, how grateful you are for him, how grateful you are that he is the giver of life, how grateful you are that he can give you joy and peace. He can release us into freedom. He can release us from our burdens and our weights and our heaviness. He is the Lord God Almighty. And we are so in love. I am so in love. I hope that you are so in love. I hope that you will join me in that worship today. Just begin to worship the Lord and stir yourself up um, in the presence of God and just allow him um, to come and, and commune with you. You know how awesome it is to commune with the Holy Spirit every day? It's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing for me. So I invite you, just uh, even as you go about your course of your day, just begin to play some worship music. Just begin to, while you're getting dressed for work this morning, just begin to play some music uh, that, that's going to stir you unto the good things and the goodness of God. He's a good God, and he gives good gifts to his children. Children, And I love him. I love the Lord. I love the Lord because he first loved me. Hallelujah. Just a little worship to start your day. Nothing wrong with that, right? So we're going to get into today's devotional. It is February 10th, and our devotional is going to be a good one. It's going to be good because this one is something that we all can use to examine ourselves 
and we can use to um, allow God to strengthen us, correct us, and bring us into helping others. So our um, devotional title is Blessed Are the Peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers. It says, when you see fires, put them out. I have called you to be a peacemaker. Listen to that. It says, I have called you to be a peacemaker. The enemy uses the tongue of man to start fires that originate in hell. Such fires seek to divide, distress, and disgust the brethren. But as for you, put out the fires with the words of love. Don't engage in strife. Squash it with words of faith. I will use your words of faith and love to convict the offenders so they will repent, turn their hearts toward me, and speak of good things. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers. That's a scripture in um, Matthew 5, 9. It says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. And then in the Amplified Version, it says, blessed, spiritually calm, with life joy in God's favors, are the makers and maintainers of peace, for they will express his character and be called the sons of God. The peacemakers are those who express their, the character of God. That's why they are called the sons of God, the children of God, because they look like him. When they are willing to bring peace and love into situations where strife has arisen. Um, the, the devotional starts out by saying, when you see fires, put them out. If you saw a fire in the natural, would you extinguish it? Would you put some, you know, something on it to make it go out? That's what the Lord is calling us to do. When we are looking at the culture that we are in, everything and uh, is there, there's conflict everywhere. Everything has conflict in it, whether it's our social media, whether it's uh, now even in some church situations, whether it's in our political arena, whether it's in the government, there's conflict. Just um, naturally, the, the Bible says, you know, you'll have wars and rumors of wars. There's always conflict. But in your natural sphere of influence, where you are, where you can make a difference, um, the, the, the devotional says, I have called you to be a peacemaker. God has called us out to be a peacemaker. So if we see strife, it is our job by the Holy Ghost to be the one to enter in to make the peace and not be the one who is the strife. <laughs> the, the scripture tells us that the Lord is not a fan of your strife. He's not a fan of contention. He's not a fan of... He's not happy with that. As a matter of fact, um, one scripture, I think is in um, Proverbs 6, it says he hates strife. He hates strife. He hates every evil work. And strife is a, is the work of the, the, the flesh. That's, that's in Galatians 5. It says that strife is the work of the flesh. The Lord hates it. Um, I think it says, yeah, here it is. It says a false witness that speaks lies and he that sows discord among the brethren. The Lord hates. So if he hates strife and he calls the, the peacemakers, the children of God, which side are you going to be on? Which side do you want to be on? And, and just allowing yourself to recognize what strife looked like. So what is strife? What is strife? Let's, let's look at a definition for strife. Strife is angry or bitter disagreement over fundamental issues. It's just total conflict. We have conflict in our culture. We have conflict in race relations. We have conflict um, in our educational system. We have conflict, whether, you know, it's conflict whether teachers want to go back to school or not. Here in Georgia, I know some places teachers have already gone back to school, but you know, there's conflict there. there there's conflict in the court system. There's conflict. There's just conflict. Where do you come in to bring peace and the love of God and the faith of God in the situation to be able to squash it? Even as the, the devotional said, squash it. Right? Let's see. What does it say? It says, the tongue 
of man starts fires that originate in hell. The scripture in James 3, 6 um, speaks to that because it's saying that the tongue is a fire. That is a fire. The tongue, the, the smallest member. It says it's a little member, but it can start a fire. And what does that mean? It, it can ignite something that's going to cause contention, can start wars, can start um, conflict, can start um, arguments. The tongue. So that's why it's important to study to be quiet in all that we have going on in our, our world. Um, everybody has an opinion and there are outlets for you to voice your opinion, whether it's accurate, whether it's factual, whether it's um, profanity laced, whether, <laughs> whether it's um, Whatever your opinion and your idea is, there is an available place for you to release it and let somebody give somebody a piece of your mind and not to, uh, and now there's still that same outlet to allow for peace and, and um, for allow for the peacemakers to enter in. So when we talk about the peacemaker, it is a person who brings the peace and the pre peace is freedom from disturbance. To bring tranquility to a situation everybody has an outlet but there are very few that are using their outlet to um, produce peace and to to make peace the um, the goal everybody wants to say their peace entertainment you know reality shows everybody has conflict that's just the world you know, whether it's action and, and uh, you know, even Marvel, Marvel movies and all of that, everything is about conflict. And then how to bring about the peace is usually not the um, the main thing. <laughs> I mean, in some of those movies, it, it brings peace because the war will end. Because that's one of the definitions of peace is at the end of a war. At the end of the war, there's peace. Whether you like what the peace is or not, it's still peace. But... Your, our job as believers is to bring in peace. It is to be peacemakers. The Lord has called us. He is, he is calling for believers to be peacemakers in this time and season. And season, we, we're talking, we're looking at the time and the hour that we're in. And, you know, the Bible tells us at in the last days, men will be lovers of themselves. The love of many will wax cold. But it is the believer's job to come in and bring the love of God. Um, why is that important? Because you're, as a representative of the Lord, you're going to have to do what he would do. He would be, be bringing in the love. And in situations, you, you need to be able to know, I have um, the authority to go in and rectify and cause for um, a different way, to cause for a different thing to be seen, to cause for a different option for people because people just feel like this is the way, you know, most people, some people, they on 90 before they ever even open their mouth. <laughs> they already, you know, here, you already ready to fight. You already ready to, for conflict. Why? Because that's the environment that they're in. That's how they grew up. That's what, what's going on in their household, in their neighborhood. So you, you're already there. And so showing someone a different way, you don't have to be that way. You don't have to do that. I talk to um, some young people, they come into my office sometimes and they sit and they talk with me. And that's one of the things that we address is that you don't have to have a response for everything because your responses are always going to, depending on how, how quick you, you know, quickly you respond, your responses are going to um, get you in some trouble. You know, oh, my mom put me out today. Why? Because you're running your mouth. <laughs> and she wants peace. So in her, her way of getting peace was to release you out of her door. That's just kind of what it is. Right? So our goal is to bring in the love of God, to be the peacemaker, to cause for um, the offenses of others to be recognized and to be brought to an end. Um, so this says, don't engage in strife. Squash it. That's, 
that's the biggest thing that most times we don't feel like we should squash it I want to be right I want you to hear me because when people are offended they feel like I need to be heard and you're not hearing me and so I'm going to speak louder and I'm going to continue and I'm not going to speak to you again until you tell me that you understood that I'm right we're not going to be friends no more none of that you just don't want peace and you're willing to sacrifice your peace for being right when you don't really need to do that so but it, it says it says I will use your words listen to this it says I will use your words of faith and love to convict the offenders and they will repent and turn their hearts toward me is that not the goal to turn the believers hearts toward God to turn the unbelievers hearts toward God to cause for repentance so that we are not in sin that we are not under the the thing that the Lord hates is that not the goal I think it might be the goal I don't think I know it's the goal <laughs> I know it's the goal because it's what the Word of God says and so getting on board with what the Word of God says that's that's where that's where we will always be right when we get on board with what the Word of God says and the Word of God says um, to operate in peace and that you will be blessed I love this um, from the um, the amplified version the definition of what it says blessed is it says blessed spiritually calm with life joy life joy life hyphenated joy in God's favor so you mean you have a joyous life in God's favor and are the makers and maintainers of peace for they will express his character and be called the sons of God you have the blessing of the Lord and his acknowledgement that you are his son you are his daughter so that's our goal today i want you to just even as you go about your day just go about your day thinking about how you can be a peacemaker in a situation how you can be the one who is not the tail bearer tail bearers bring strife how you can be the one who is setting the goal for others to have peace to walk in peace to not continue um, to make to c continue a thing to keep it going to keep fanning the flame making it uh, continue but that the Lord would use you to put you in the place where you are the peacemaker and you are the one who is able to give the direction that is going to cause for peace in every situation that you encounter you are the uh, the minister in your environment you are the one who has the word of the Lord for your environment so use your mouth use your words of faith and use the love of God I wanted to find this other scripture um, that I thought I had written down here so that um, in just talking about the love of God because it is important for us to know um, is love one another that's what it was it just simply said love one another as I have loved you help one another um, use your your influence of, to be a help to somebody else help one another love one another as I have loved you it says by your love will all men know that you are my disciples let's operate in the love of God let's operate according to how God has designed and set it up and be different in this in this um, season in this area this time that we're in because there's so much that is contrary to peace contrary to to love um, that God needs his people to stand up and be ready to release the love of God so I hope that's you today I hope that's you. So we're going to do this prayer and then I'm going to close out. It says, set a guard over my mouth and help me to speak words that are pleasing to you. Give me wisdom to discern the beginning of strife so that I do not, that I do not participate in the enemy's plan and help me to be a maker and maintainer of peace in every situation. 
Father, we thank you that you have called us to be peacemakers. We thank you, Father, that you've given us the tools, Father, to make peace. You've given us the tools to build it in our communities, in our homes, God, in our ministries, Lord. You've given us the tools, Father, to walk in righteousness. Father, you've given us the tools to be transformed by the renewing of our minds that we may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We thank you, Father, that you are using us in this hour, Father, to be peacemakers that we are blessed, that we have your blessing, we have your favor, we have your life joy, and that we have your love, Father, that will continue in us, that we will display to others. We thank you for it today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. I hope you enjoyed this devotional. I hope it blessed you. I hope it challenged you. I hope it caused you to um, want to walk in the things of God in a deeper way. If you um, have not liked this channel or subscribed to the channel, you're just passing through, you've just seen it for the first time, please click that like button. Please click that subscribe button and also the notification button so you can be abreast on everything coming off the assembly line here at Choose Life. Amazing channel. It is um, full of the love of God. So blessings to you. Thank you, Pastor Gina, for another opportunity to share and um, put your comments in the comment section. Let's hear what you got to say. Bless the Lord. I love you all in Jesus name. Amen.